I'm really happy to have three complementary participants today here. So one is uh, from the research and development side, uh, Dr. Gloy from uh, the RWTH Aachen University. On the other hand, we do have almost uh, the last part of the textile manufacturing chain, uh, well-known uh, garment manufacturer, also retailer, I would say, yeah. uh, Ms. Dönde Ünal, and also uh, from the textile machinery side, we do have uh, the chief marketing officer, Mr. Küpeli from um, Haas Group. So thank you very much. When you look at the textile research landscape in Germany, Dr. Gloy, what are the main measures to accompany the transformation process of the German textile industry towards Industry 4.0? I know there are some different um, uh, attempts. Please tell us something about this. Okay. Um, first of all, the German uh, textile industry, uh, we've got around 1,400 companies with uh, around 130,000 workers and a turnover of around 32 billion euros. And uh, when I take a look at the German textile production facilities in comparison to what I see, for example, in Turkey, uh, I see that in Germany there's a huge lack in the field of modernization, digitalization, machinery. So the German government uh, set up uh, several uh, projects in order to, to boost this um, modernization of the German textile industry. Uh, the main measurement, there's a project called Future Tex. That's a 20 million euros uh, project uh, located in Chemnitz, where they take the textile industry as a typical traditional industry and um, very open consortium where we take um, for example, uh, Fraunhofer Institutes with a focus on factory planning, automation, embedded systems, in order to set up smart factories for the textile industry. And there are uh, several post projects already running. Uh, one project is on open platforms, open innovation. We've got projects uh, looking at mass customization and projects on the smart factory. And in these projects, we take a close look on what data is available in a, in a textile mill, how can we model these data, and uh, what kind of data do we need to exchange in order to raise the efficiency of the production. So this uh, project Future Tech with a really huge budget is one of the most important things going on in, in uh, Germany right now. Besides that, uh, for Industry 4.0, there are, I think, around 10 so-called competence centers. So around Germany, there are competence centers funded by the German government, uh, helping companies in order to set up digitalization industry 4.0 transformations. And uh, there will be a competence center industry 4.0 for the textile industry starting in June. That's um, led by the German Textile Association with three locations in Chemnitz, Stuttgart in Aachen uh, with a budget of around 5 million euros where we go into the companies and help them, consult them in uh, boosting this digital transformation. So that's also a very important measurement. It's not so much looking on research but more on how do we transfer research from, from the universities into the companies for the field of digitalization. Besides that, uh, we've got so-called test labs 4.0 also funded by the German government. So our institute in Aachen is an official test lab for Industry 4.0. So companies who are developing Industry 4.0 solutions can come in our institute and test their developments, see how much efficiency can I get from my development, what's the benefit of my um, development in our labs before they implement that in the field, in the factories. That's also a very important measurement. And uh, then, of course, uh, the German Textile Machinery Association, 4DMR, they already had certain um, projects initiated. Okay, thank you very much. Now I would like to go uh, on with uh, Döndöhannem. Yeah. So, I, I, as I told before, I have been in Izmir. It's really impressive, uh, the developments over there uh, towards um, Industry 4.0. So we know Hugo Boss as a very well-known brand on the one hand, but uh, on the other hand, they are really reinforced by a very well-equipped um, manufacturing infrastructure. Please um, 
Um, tell us something, you as the last ring of the textile and apparel manufacturing chain, what are your main reasons and main drivers to transform Hugo Boss into the new age of industry? Thank you, Bayram Bey. <coughs> First of all, I would like to thank all the participants and speakers for two exciting days and for <coughs> Shanae Hanum as well. And there are two answers for this question, actually. The first is change and the second is sustainability. Uh, the world is changed as it was yesterday, actually, but this time is faster than yesterday and there is a big exponential growth effect. Um, the so-called unbreakable companies uh, today is demolished and the complete new business model uh, we had not even yesterday imagined, uh, they are unexpectedly successful. Let me give a very uh, small example on it. 91% um, of adults today keep their mobile phone within arm reach. And so, uh, and every hour of every day. So we want to be connected. And the, the world uh, is connected, uh, 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 the world is connected each other uh, as never before, let's say. Naturally, this affects our business model, our process, production process, our shopping habits, our social life, and so on. And e even, uh, competition changes. Uh, produce a product today. Produce a product. Produce this product with best quality, high speed, competitive cost is not enough. I mean, to, uh, it's necessary to uh, uh, to offer some services to our customers. Uh, today's world. I mean, we see lots of examples around. Every uh, big companies offer some services beside product. And in addition, this uh, individualization, uh, the customization, the high level of customization is, uh, is very important. And uh, the needs of customer on that point should, uh, should be met. Because the people want to express their personality, their uh, originality, uh, and they want to get rid of crowds. This is a very crucial point for us as a fashion style uh, because uh, expressing themselves, it's not, not just the wearing suit or using that car or using this phone. Uh, it's something like um, reaching that uh, digital, uh, reaching a level of a digital game or getting more appreciation or, uh, on a digital platform. So at the end, our competitors are changing. This is a, our new reality. We are a fashion brand, and our competitors are Xenia, Prada, and Armani. Yes, they are our competitors. But we have new competitors as well, like uh, Airbnb, like Apple, like uh, Instagram, because the way people express themselves also changed. So as a fashion brand, we have to have unique uh, experience to our customers. Uh, it should be an experience. It's, it's not a basic fashionable style. Furthermore, I know that you are following a very, very concrete strategy to achieve your objectives. It is a, the so-called digital twin yes. of Hugo Boss. Yes. What is uh, the idea behind the digital twin strategy and uh, the strategy it itself? Okay. Can you please tell us something sure. about it? Sure. Um, um, we started. Uh, we we started defining our vision first, and we defined as a smart factory. <coughs> then uh, we formulated our strategy, building up a building up a digital twin of our physical factory. Uh, let me explain a bit more. Our first goal is uh, collecting data from man machine material in our, from our production. And here we have a motto, Every, everything that can be digitized will be digitized. This is our motto. And on the second stage, uh, we'll focus on the uh, connect between these digital dots. This, is the, this will be the connection part. And then uh, we'll focus on the smart systems and uh, we'll, we'll convert these data 
uh, force simulation and then uh, our target becoming smart factory. And finally, uh, we dream that our digital twin uh, can predict the uh, problems and then trigger the uh, preventive action in our physical factory. This is our uh, dream. What we actually um, have currently uh, in terms of Industry 4.0, um, what we expect. I had some chats with some customers they are, who are focusing on that kind of area. Um, they told me they are not interested that I have, as machinery manufacturer, one solution for them. They are more interested to have a total solution for the whole factory. That means we are talking about industry standards. We have to use industry standards. One key word is, of course, OPC. OPC, this open platform communications. This is a specification which exists since 1996. But there are still um, companies who are not fulfilling this requirement. So every machinery manufacturer, they have to offer this kind of server in order to give the possibility to the customer to use Industry 4.0 complete for the factory because the customer has four or five machinery suppliers. Um, the expectation of the customers, and that was very interesting for the fabric manufacturing, it's very similar to that what we learned from Vestel. You can imagine there are companies with 5,000 to 10,000 people in textile, and I talk now about the customer from Bangladesh. He told me he has big problems to manage the material flow you know, there are different kind of fabrics, different kind of applications, procedures, um, processes, production processes, based on orders from 10 customers. So the question of the customer is very easy. He's saying, where is my particular specific batch of fabric and in, in which production stage? Currently, they don't have the possibility to track. He's asking for a fabric, let's say, fabric tracking system, which would be, of course, very useful for them. So this okay. is what I expect will be a trend in um, fabric manufacturing. So my final question will be, are there any requests or expectations from your side as a textile machine manufacturer towards uh, textile manufacturers as well as towards research institutions like the Institute in Aachen uh, to or to do more within this field? Well, I mean, you are already active. <laughs> and, um, but what I would wish is, you know, in, if you look to the environmental protection topic, there are a lot of um, workshops, seminars in the specific countries. Um, I would imagine and I would appreciate and I would do my contribution here to be in a work group to promote the technology and the added value more in, in that countries, like the seminars or workshops. The technology is there, um, the possibilities are high, the added value is here, but we need, we need to make the promotion to that kind of customer group. Hello, Hassan Ure, uh, Innovation Mentor. Uh, one of the claim of Industry 4.0 is mass customization or lot size one, they say. So do they expect in the, new, in the new future, in the production, they will achieve lot size, lot size one, which production do not like, I know, but maybe smart manufacturing technologies will enable it. So what do they think of it? Well, may I start? As, as you saw in the example from Adidas, you've got lot size one there. Yeah, that's mass customization, lot size. Not for the, yeah, well, Adidas is, is still producing mass products at a different price with a different market, also a different customer. So in my opinion, there's somehow going to be both. You've got this high level, very individualized products and also mass products uh, for a dedicated price. <laughs> yeah, it is always a challenging question for manufacturing people. Um, um, uh, basically, I believe that there is a possibility to make ideal plan actually together with these uh, data uh, possibilities, big data possibilities. But uh, to prepare that, 
we should structure all these processes in advance, and then uh, we should uh, create the most flexible process and the micro process, I mean, uh, the operations. And also the uh, skill side is another challenge for uh, that. If you don't have fully automated uh, production, then you need to use people and you need to train them uh, continuously. And we may create some digital dojo to uh, train them or something Then I uh, believe making good planning via uh, using with uh, big data and uh, creating flexibility in production via new technologic machine and uh, training, it should be uh, possible for the future. I'm sure it will come, but again, the question is when. Uh, because the trend is who is driving this, the, the customers, the end users, they are the driver of this kind of issue. So the next generations, they're asking for customized products and very quick. And um, I mean, Hugo Boss is going this way. I know other companies, they're also going this way. I make a configuration through my app. I press the button and the order is at customer and I get it hopefully tomorrow. This will come, but I think the more challenging part here is the culture, the work culture. We have a mixture in the company between Generation Y, Generation X with the experienced people. I think this is the challenge. It will take time. Mm -hmm.